Yes, and that's right, there is a brand new 12 bay NAS and a number of you are watching this video because you've been waiting on a follow-up to the DS3617XS that seems to have been taking forever. Let's put it into perspective. Since that unit was first announced, the following has happened. There was the one acquired ransomware outbreak. The Trump administration began. Brexit officially started. The UK had two prime ministers and so did Australia. The COVID pandemic kicked off and so did TikTok. Disney bought the X-Men franchise and still had time to make 12 more movies. Harry married Meghan, Bill divorced Melinda, uh, Taiwan became the first Asian country out there to allow um, gay marriage and at the same time India finally decriminalised homosexuality, GDPR kicked in and annoying most of Europe let's be honest and Saudi Arabia finally allowed women to drive, let's be honest it's been a while isn't it? <laughs> So, a brand new Synology 12 bait. Let's be honest, this is something a number of us have waited a long time for. I've talked about its predecessor, the DS3617XS, for quite a long time. As something, as one of their best examples of NAS solution of the time that was supporting everything from all of the applications of DSM 6 and 6.1 and 6.2 and DSM 7 in that system's lifetime, as well as arriving with support of a myriad of third party applications as well. But as the years have gone on, the 3617, although it was still, and indeed still is, quite a solid purchase. I think a number of people were kind of going, a lot of time's gone by, where is this new one? And finally we have it, the DS3622XS Plus. That plus is important, we'll talk about that in a bit. This is their brand new 12 bay NAS. And although the information we have here has come from a few different sources online and we don't have much concrete information about availability and release, we're pretty confident this is something that's gonna arrive relatively soon. This brand new 12 bay, again, is a Xeon powered 12 bay network attached storage solution, but it's more to it than that. It's a couple of little surprises down the way. Um, but a 12 bay solution allows you to fully or partially populate this entire massive desktop NAS solution with hard drives or SSDs or a combination of both for caching for an enormous RAID storage array. Of course, being a Xeon based power, uh, a NAS there, this does push it very much into that enterprise bracket for a number of users. This is a six core Intel Xeon processor. It is the Xeon D1531. And again, this is a six core uh, uh, CPU here, server grade at 2.2 gigahertz per core that can be burst up to 2.7 gigahertz per core. And we will talk a little bit about how those specifications compare against the older unit at the end of the video as well. But for now, that CPU, which again, isn't the newest CPU, let's all be honest here, much like its, pre its predecessor, this is a Xeon family CPU that's not breaking into like the silvers or the kind of 2020, 2021 series of processor there, but it's still a very competent server grade processor there. On top of that, it also arrives with 16 gig of a DDR4 Sodium ECC memory that can be upgraded up to a total 48 gig, bit weird. Um, but on top of that, there is unfortunately, no SSD caching on this box, something that really, really surprised me. I thought this was something that Synology had really gone all in on. But some of uh, their systems that I really, really think could really benefit from SSD caching, this one is one that doesn't arrive with it. And given that it's a hugely populated device of hard drive, you know, SATA-based hard drive connections, I think this is a system that could really benefit from caching inside. Now, it doesn't mean that you haven't got that option, of course. You can upgrade this system with a PCIe Gen 3 Types 8 card. Indeed, Synology have their own range of upgrade cards that support M2 NVMe caching with their own range of M2 NVMe's. Indeed, you've got combo cards like this one. This is the E1020Ti, which has got two NVMe ports inside and a 10G port on the outside there, a copper-based connection. And then you've got the option of a dedicated cache card as well, just caching on its own. Now, alongside this, of course, with the M2 NVMe caching to bolster uh, both read and write caching within that system, there's also, with the up upgrade slot available to you there, things like fiber channeling and the, that new 25 GBE fiber card that Synology uh, released a few months ago there. But of course, why would you need to do that? Because this has 10 gigabit Ethernet on board. One big, big, big jump up from its predecessor is the DS3622XS arrives with two 10 GBE ports on board. Both of them copper-based, 10 G base T, and with the support of link aggregation, it means you can have over 2,000 megabytes per second connectivity or two gigabytes per second throughput between the NAS and the connected network or a direct connected machine. So you have got a lot of throughput there. And given that there are 
12 bays of SATA storage available here, that's a lot of potential to fully saturate that connection. And again, that is not the end. You can upgrade it with single or dual port 10 GBE cards or some of those uh, fiber or 25 GBE cards that I've already talked about there. Now, the rest of the connections on the box are a little bit more pedestrian, has to be said. Um, it does arrive with three 1 GBE ports on there. So on the one hand, Again, there's three extra connections. There's a total of five network connections on this box, but still one GBE. It's great they've given us the 10 GBE, so I'm not going to give them too much stick there for one gigabit Ethernet, but still, mm, I kind of wish we'd seen more out of those in these newer generation of Synology, and I hope this is one of the last times we see, uh, at least on uh, Intel or AMD-based NASs, um, uh, one GBE as a network connection there. There's also two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports there, so five gigabit. But again, those predominantly are reserved for utilization of storage drives, you know, external storage, uh, localized backup drives, and of course, there's a few network peripherals and of course, UPSs and stuff like that. I know DSM-7 removed a lot of USB-supported devices. Um, from the software and i think a lot of that is to do with the architecture of the software more than the platform themselves so that's something again those usb ports the fact they haven't upgraded those to maybe usb 3.2 gen 2 maybe there isn't enough pcie lanes i know both this cpu and its predecessor i've got uh, the same number of pcie lanes for the chipset there so again we can kind of let that go a little bit there now how this uh, compares to its older unit there? Well, um, when you compare it against the DS3617XS, this certainly does come across the better. Uh, some ways more than others, obviously the inclusion of 10 gigabit ethernet there against the older unit only having four 1GBE ports is a big, big, big jump up there. You've got the PCI upgradability on both units there, but the inclusion of up to 20, um, 20 gigabits of connectivity there cannot be overlooked. And a lot of that is to do with this being the XS Plus series, not just standard XS series there. Obviously there's five years of manufacturer's warranty included, but because it's an excess box, there are other things about it that may please some and disappoint others. First, obviously, an excess box never supports Synology Hybrid RAID SHR, and that's very true here. From the date sheets that we've seen, this device will still continue that tradition of not supporting Synology Hybrid RAID on these enterprise-level boxes. We talked about this last year. Synology feel that Although SHR is still a very viable configuration, it doesn't give the performance that traditional RAIDs uh, give. So it, uh, for the enterprise level users, they kind of remove SHR as an option because then you've got the high performance traditional RAIDs of your RAID 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, etc, etc. Uh, now that CPU, if we go into a little bit more detail about that, um, we can see that looking at Intel's own uh, uh, spec sheets for those processing, um, the, the CPUs and the breakdown of the date sheets on those, these have actually been released not a huge amount of time apart. Their run is both of them of the same kind of year. So again, not an enormous upgrade, at least in terms of release and architecture, but still, it is a six core processor over a four core, and there are improvements in caching there, in the number of CPU threads, and of course the cores, as mentioned. So again, it is a better CPU, and if you were looking at the DS3617XS right now, Definitely, this is a better choice. I wish I could tell you when it's going to arrive. Unfortunately, I can't. Um, I, there's not even anything on a price point, although I'm willing to bet we're going to hear more about this very, very, very soon. Because it feels like the way this information has come out is that this is very much on the periphery, uh, very much on the edge here. Also, in terms of pricing, if you look at the old box, the old unit, uh, the 3617XS, I say old unit, it's still available. Um, it was available for around £2,150 or $2,500, depending on where you bought and tax and stuff like that. And although it would be great if they maintained that price point on this newer unit, we have to accept an XS into an XS Plus series with the inclusive 10 GBE. Synology are almost realistically going to improve, uh, increase that price on that unit, which again, some will be a little bit mm, mushed out about, but I think a lot of things have changed about Synology all these five years or almost five years since the release of 3X17XS there. Definitely Synology's portfolio of solutions has become a lot more colorful and filled in in between. And when the 3617XS came out, there was very little before or after it in the portfolio and it really stuck out 
in kind you know its price point there and difficulty to kind of a fluidity throughout the portfolio whereas when we look at this unit there are a lot more solutions available in both desktop and uh, lower rack mount form and you've got units like the ds1621 um, xs plus which is a six bay uh, tend to be easy on base nas which really fills that line between a lot of the portfolio and these desktop NASs, and I think this might sit a great deal better on that range of solutions here. Now, I'm not gonna talk a lot about software. One, because I've talked about DSM-7 a lot, and two, I've got a big DSM-7 uh, revisit coming up on the channel very, very soon. So rather than read hash old ground, I do recommend you check out my DSM-7 review, where I go into a lot more detail about everything DSM-7, and of course, this unit with that kind of hardware under the bonnet, there's going to be a lot to play with there and i think this system is almost certainly going to support the gamut the entire range of synology software and services so that's everything we know about this box and i think we're going to hear about it more officially quite soon so do stay tuned for that it's the full breakdown in the art in an article at nas compares below in the description so do check that out which i will be updating as more information becomes apparent and there is another uh, 12 bay as well the ds 2422 plus i'm going to be talking about in a video just after this one so again don't think i've forgotten about that or the expansion they're all going to get talked about soon and of course this 3622 xs plus again is i reckon going to be available if not before the end of the year then maybe within the next month at least so stay tuned for that but otherwise thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video if you do click like it helps me understand what you guys like in these videos and it helps me make the next video better than the last and of course Click subscribe and click the bell to be notified as more new hardware releases and of course the reviews, the overviews and more here on the channel get, uh, get made live and you can find out about them. But otherwise, I will see you next time.